Hello, hello, this is Tony with Phillips Fishworks, and today I want to show you a little bit about batch culturing Daphnia magna and moina. So what is uh, Daphnia magna and moina? They are little tiny crustaceans. Uh, they're very similar to each other. Uh, they're not exactly the same though. For purposes of this video and what mostly concerns all of you is the main difference between the two is the size. So Daphnia magna are going to get about five millimeters max in length and the Moina are gonna get around one to two millimeters max in length. I prefer the batch method uh, when culturing Daphnia or Moina. What is the batch method? It is creating a green water culture first. Once that green water culture is mature, which takes anywhere from five to seven days, then you're going to add a starter culture of Daphnia or Moina to that green water culture, and they're going to just explode in population in a, a week or so. Why is this one of the easier methods? Well, a more traditional route might be setting up an aquarium of some kind or a culture container, adding the Daphnia, and then feeding them with some dried algaes or some powdered yeast. And that is certainly one way to do it, but that requires uh, usually daily feedings and very frequent water changes. When you're feeding them with a dry powdered algae, that is a, a dead algae. So there's still nutrients in there, the Daphnia and Moina, can use to grow and reproduce on, but it is not quite the same as a living algae, and also it's going to affect the water very negatively. So the second you put that dry powdered algae in the water, it's going to start fouling that water. Uh, so you can't feed very much at a time because you'll, you'll ruin the water. So you end up having to feed less very often. So many people find if you feed a little bit every single day with this powdered algae, you can kind of manage that, um, that water quality. Uh, another challenge that happens is as Moina and Daphnia both are very explosive with the reproduction, uh, you can have 100, then 1,000, then 10,000, then 100,000, you know, very quickly. Within, you know, a few weeks, you, you can really be in those huge numbers. So if you're feeding a dry powdered algae, you have to watch those numbers very closely and increase that food as you go. Now, once you get into those really high numbers, you're feeding a ton, that water quality really starts to go downhill you know, as you're feeding a, a dead powdered uh, algae or maybe you're feeding yeast or something like that. If you create a green water culture first and then you add Daphnia or Moina to it, they have an infinite food source. Now, as they're eating and eating and eating and growing in population, they just keep eating more and more as they need it. Now, because it's a living algae, it is not all that maximum, you know, that huge food source is not contributing negatively to the water quality. In fact, as that algae is growing, it's absorbing nutrients out of the water and waste from the Daphnia. So in a way, it's actually cleaning the water. Now, as you get into huge numbers of Daphnia or Moina, both, um, you know, they are eating that algae, they are producing lots of waste. So the water quality will start to go downhill, but it's much less fast uh, than if you were feeding a powdered dry algae. Another huge benefit is that living green algae gets, it's basically gut loading the Daphnia or Moina with that living algae. So as your fish eats, the Daphnia that was grown on living green water, you're going to have a much healthier fish because it's eating healthier food. The Daphnia itself, if you look at the gut of the Daphnia or the digestive tract under a microscope, you're gonna see those little uh, bright green single cell algaes in there. You're gonna have a bright green um, little digestive trail in there. And that is hugely beneficial and healthy for the fish when the fish eats that Daphnia. If the Daphnia is growing on uh, some kind of yeast or bacteria or some kind of dry powder algae, yes, there's nutrition there, but it's not quite the same as a living green algae. Also, if you are struggling to keep up with feeding that growing population with one of these powdered algaes, you might find that, uh, you know, that water's cleared up and 
the digestive tracts are empty. So maybe you're feeding the Daphnia thinking you're doing this really great healthy thing, but the Daphnia itself is not very healthy or the Daphnia itself is starved and there's not a whole lot to that Daphnia other than uh, maybe some proteins or the shell itself. So there's still some nutrition there, but it's not the same as a uh, vibrant, healthy Daphnia that's full of eggs and uh, you know thriving in a green water culture. How do we get a giant bucket of green water like this? Well, this video today is just kind of a little sneak peek into the process. Um, I've got more in-depth videos about green water, Daphnia, and Moina coming out very soon, but I was making up some new cultures and I wanted to show you the process. Also, here's another little look at the green water machine. So here is a one gallon jar of green water. This is a green water culture. Here is a culturing kit. This is what we're in the middle of working on and testing here at Phillips Fishworks. We do have Daphnia and Moina now on the website. Uh, this is not quite on the website, but it will be very soon. This is a one gallon jar culture kit. Comes with a jar, lid, has the whole rigid airline tubing. Comes with a live green water culture. So this is live green water in here. You set this up at home. You've got your algae nutrient. There's a little airline. You even get a little air valve so you can control the flow of the air. It'll come with nice instructions that explain it all to you. You hook an airline up to here and that's what keeps the circulation bubbling. So this will be on the website. If it's not on the website now when you're watching this, it will be on the website very soon. Please check back. But with that kit, you'll be able to make jars of green water very easily and very repeatably. That's the secret. You've got to be able to create green water repeatably and it's got to be reliable or you're going to always struggle feeding your Daphnia or Moina. So once you're able to create green water, then you can take nutrient, scale it up a bit and create buckets of green water. Now, once you have buckets of green water, you, you, the amount of Moina and Daphnia you can create is endless. I like culturing Moina and Daphnia in these five gallon buckets. They're easy to work with, easy to move around. You can use one of these cheap lights. Aeration, if you don't have air, you can literally stir it with a spoon, keep the algae suspended. It kind of keeps itself suspended, but it will settle over time. So give it a stir or even easier, just keep an aerator on it. But basically, once you create a bucket, once you create a bucket of green water, then you're just adding Daphnia to it. So here's Daphnia Magna. These are out of a, an existing culture. Uh, the culture is doing very well. There's plenty of eggs, plenty of healthy Daphnia in there. If you can avoid it, you want to avoid starting your cultures with crashing cultures. So if you've got Daphnia going, it's, look at that. We're gonna just. So of course there's a lot more to creating one of these cultures. They're not hard at all in themselves. The key is the liquid nutrients and the live green water starter. If you have that and some light, green water's no problem. Where green water becomes difficult is if you're trying some DIY fertilizer, maybe it's made out of some kind of uh, miracle grow you, you bought at a hardware store or something, that kind of scares me, but okay. Um, and maybe your green water starter is not you know, a very good starter. Maybe you're just trying to take a wild sample or you're using aquarium water, hoping that there's enough little single cell algaes that when you give it a bunch of nutrients and light, it's gonna bloom into green water. Yes, that can happen. And people, uh, you know, they have their aquariums uh, go green sometimes on accident, but we wanna create something reliable. We wanna make something that you can set up and it works pretty much every time. Now there are uh, reasons it may fail and there are other variables, but if you can have a very high success rate at creating green water and Daphnia and Moina cultures, that kind of solves that problem. You know, you hear Daphne and Moina touted as this uh, endless free food supply or, you know, infinite food, buy it once, have it forever. 
Well, yeah, if you can keep it alive, and the best way to keep it alive is with live green water. Is it really that simple? Create a green water culture, add Daphnia to it. Create a green water culture, add Daphnia to it. Now, what do I have to do with this? Well, aeration would be nice because that's going to keep that green water more suspended. Do I have to feed this? No. If the water is green, they have food. Do I have to change the water? No, it's not going to foul. And, you know, we're treating this as a, a batch. So we're going to grow this Daphnia as they start multiplying. Uh, about a week from now, we could probably even take some out of it. And then we're going to want to harvest from it. And uh, weeks will go by and the population is going to explode. We can feed out of it. Now, once they run out of green water and it starts to crash, we're going to start a new one. Now, we'll want to start one a little bit before that. But the goal is to have a couple of these going at different stages of reproduction or different stages of um, progression. That way we always have one booming in population. So why don't we have to feed this? Because they're eating the green water. And tomorrow when I wake up and come in, there's still going to be green water in here. In a week from now, they'll still be eating that green water. I'm not going to have to come in here and feed this every day. So I don't have to mess with this. This can just be cooking in the background without my attention. And that's the only way I can manage it here because I can't keep on top of feeding all these different tanks or buckets or barrels. I can't keep on top of feeding them dry powdered algaes. And that's not even the best option anyways. Okay, so now we're going to take our moina, which is much, much smaller, and we've thoroughly rinsed our net off. It is very easy to contaminate these cultures with each other. So if you get a little tiny bit of moina, if you get one moina in your Daphnia culture, eventually there will be moina mixed in with that Daphnia. Maybe that's not a big deal to you, and it may not even be an issue at all, uh, but me, as I'm selling cultures of each creature, I need you know, clean cultures. I can't have uh, Daphne in my Moina culture and vice versa. So again, this is just too simple. Bunch of Moina, bam, culture is started. Now again, I had to create the green water bucket first and we're gonna have tons of information coming out very soon about green water, especially once we get done with our culturing kits. We are in the middle of testing a bunch of stuff. I've sent them out to customers, I've got them in friends and family's hands messing around with them, seeing how easily it is to follow the instructions and all of that. So once we're comfortable with that, we will uh, bring them to market, so to speak. But for now, you can uh, get Moina and Daphnia on the website. If you already have green water going, you can feed them that. Or people have great success with feeding them uh, dry powders and uh, yeasts and things like that. It works out well. It's just a little more labor because you have to keep you know, feeding them regularly those uh, items and you have to also keep changing out that water uh, to keep it from fouling too quickly. So we're going to treat this as a batch, meaning once it kind of really booms in production, we can feed them a little bit. If they run out of green water, we can feed them more green water or we can even supplement with the powdered algaes. That's fine uh, to prolong the length of this culture. But once it really starts to crash and go downhill, we're going to dump it and start it over again because we'll have other cultures in the works. So, you know, I'm starting three at the same time, uh, but you would really want to start one, give it a week or so, start another one, give it a week or so, start another one, maybe have three or four total. And uh, maybe this is a lot of space for you, but you know, if, if you're someone that's got a bunch of tanks, you know, a couple or uh, three or four five gallon buckets doesn't take up a huge amount of space. So that's all I really wanted to talk about and show you guys. I've got a lot more detailed information coming out in videos very soon. I've already got them recorded. I'm just working on the editing process. So these are nice live green water cultures, very dark. I like using the white buckets because they reflect that light. You can have that little clip on light. You could also set them underneath a LED light. So here's a great example. These are cheap LED shop lights like LED strip lights off of Amazon, I believe. And here we go. These are about five days old. You can see they're really dark. It's looking gorgeous. These are going to be ready very soon. I can either dump these into existing cultures because uh, I've got a lot more going than just these 
five gallon buckets of Daphne and Moina. I really, the, the five gallon bucket culturing is a newer thing for me. I'm trying to find something a little easier than dumping and dealing with 20 gallon glass aquariums. This is a brand new culture. I made this one today. You can see how light green it is. I started it, it's got the uh, less than five gallons of water actually, but uh, it's got a thousand milliliters of starter culture. That's one liter of starter culture. And the rest is regular water. I've got 20 milliliters of the um, algae nutrient, and that is a liquid uh, fertilizer that's designed to use with this single cell algae. It's safe for the uh, aquarium. It's not, a, not any kind of trouble there. I've done lots of testing on it. It's not gonna kill your shrimp or anything like that. These four are ready to really start using any time. Uh, uh, I'll probably give it a day or two till I need them. And here again is one of those gallon jar kits kind of in the works. So you see I've got an airline hooked up, a little valve up here, bubbling away. So this is literally thousands of Daphnia Magna and Moina. The black stuff, that's actually more of a dark green, hard to tell from the camera, but that is some algae that was on the inside of one of the buckets. Not a big deal at all. I mean, this is, I, I can feed this to my fish every day. If you have uh, several cultures going, you don't even need huge cultures. I don't have any culture bigger than a 20 gallon tank. Well, I do have a 55 gallon barrel, but um, I actually, that's more of a pain. It's too deep and uh, it just doesn't do the best job. So uh, 20 gallon tanks, 20 gallon barrels, buckets, whatever, do a great job. And if you could have this amount of food available at any given time, super healthy, the Daphnia and the Mo Moina, they're gonna be grown on the live green water. So they're actually a healthier uh, nutrition profile than um, a Daphnia or Moina that's grown on dry powdered algae. Uh, yes, that dry powdered algae is dead and um, yes, it has nutrients that will grow the Daphnia and be beneficial to the fish. That live food is still better than like a processed food, but there is something to the live living food. You're feeding live food to a live food to a live fish. All that life does matter. Now, Moina are much smaller. They do well in the one gallon jars. The Daphnia Magna, they tend to explode in population. And they just get too big. They're a little big for the jars. You can grow them in the one gallon jars, but they tend to, you know, you really got to harvest out of them. And really one of the secrets to any of these cultures, uh, like these buckets here, as they grow in population and really start booming, you can really start harvesting heavy, heavily out of that. And the green water is going to last longer because there's less than they're eating and they're going to crash a lot slower. Now there is kind of a expiration date, so to speak, on a culture because you know, as it's growing and growing and growing, um, the nutrient in the water is just getting more and more. So eventually you're going to have a crash of some kind, but that's a good way to look at these. It's not a permanent install. You're not going to set up a natural aquarium that's like a forever aquarium and then start growing mass Daphnia or Moina in there. That's just not realistic to even think of it that way. Think of these things as batches. I'm going to set this up. I'm going to start it. It's going to grow, boom like crazy. You're gonna harvest, harvest, harvest. And as that's, before it crashes, you're gonna start another one. And then as this thing starts winding down, then you can uh, finish it out, then go on to the next one. So you just keep starting new ones before the old ones crash, and you end up with a forever supply. Uh, very inexpensive. The Basically, after you get it rolling, all you're purchasing is the liquid nutrient, which we're going to be selling on the website. So check out the website, philipsfishworks.com. Get your Moina and Daphnia. Uh, check out the green water. If it's not on there yet, it's coming very soon. I wanna make sure these kits are gonna be successful, so I'm just not quite comfortable uh, launching them yet. There's a few more variables I wanna test. I wanna test different kinds of water to see where we're gonna have problems. Um, you know, because I want everyone to be as successful as possible. Keep your eyes on the YouTube channel. I've got more content coming out soon, uh, more in-depth green water culturing videos, some more in-depth Daphnia Magna and Moina culture videos coming very soon. Love you guys. Thank you so much for all the support. Later. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.
day Wake up, today's gonna be a good day